It feels so good to be bad. Hey guys, it's Phoebe. Welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 actors who always play villains. I know what you're doing. You think you can blink those pretty little eyes and I'll melt just like mommy and daddy did. We're taking a look at actors who get frequently typecast as bad guys. If you think we're missing someone, be sure to check out our first list on the topic. Let's get right to it. Number 10, Tim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> there are few actors out there who can pull off a dastardly, devious, and oh-so-campy villain performance like the star of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Legend, and the original TV miniseries version of Stephen King's It. All sorts of surprises down here, and balloons too, all colors. With a knack for over-the-top but still engrossing performances dripping with manic menace, this English actor has had villainous turns across the big and small screens, in live action and voiceover roles. He's menaced the internet as Kilo Khan in Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, and been a toxic blight in Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. And we've had as much fun watching him in each role as he clearly did playing them. You'll just have to work harder then. Double shifts. No breaks. Number 9, Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> Who knows how to play? And speaking of actors with a particular enthusiasm for diving headfirst into campy villain fun, this Harry Potter alumnus is remembered not just for her frequent collaborations with ex partner Tim Burton, but for a long and storied career filled with villainous turns. <laughs> Whether she's playing the dastardly Bellatrix Lestrange in Harry Potter, going after Alice's head as the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland, or turning people into pies in Sweeney Todd, this actress approaches every villain role she's offered with gusto. While the actress has joked that her recent villainous roles are thanks to her age, we think that it comes down to a pure talent for being delightfully bad. Stupid elf! You could have killed me! Number 8, Killian Murphy. Oh, it's too late. Can't stop it now. Many audience members first met this Irish actor when he appeared as the Scarecrow in the first film in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. With piercing eyes, cheekbones that could cut glass, and a subtle Irish brogue, there aren't many actors who can imbue a role with as much sinister energy as he has. Which isn't to say that he can't also go completely off the deep end when the role calls for it. It's that ability to go from icy cool to short fused and violent at the drop of a hat that makes this actor one we'll always love to see playing big screen baddies. Oh, I didn't get it. Uh, my associate grabbed it off your dad's desk, apparently next to your graduation picture. Number seven, Anthony Hopkins. Now then, tell me, what did Miggs say to you? Multiple Miggs in the next cell. He hissed at you. Who else but Dr. Hannibal Lecter could take this spot on our list? Since his groundbreaking appearance in Silence of the Lambs, this English thespian has carved out a sizable niche playing cool, unflappable, but effortlessly sinister villains across film and television. Speak in strained hisses and coughing sibilance as though he is hanging still. He's returned to the role that made him famous multiple times, but the award-winning actor is hardly coasting on past victories. Just recently, we've been delighted to watch his turn as Dr. Robert Ford, the director of the futuristic theme park that serves as the setting of HBO's Westworld. Much like the show itself, he's full of sinister secrets and shocking turns, a perfect fit for the legendary actor. Mistakes is the word you're too embarrassed to use. You ought not to be a product of a trillion of them. Number six, Jason Isaacs. Well, let us hope that Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. Another Harry Potter alum who's just oh so good at being oh so bad. This British actor is far more than just the guy underneath Lucius Malfoy's silvery locks. He's played baddies of every sort, from Captain Hook in the 2003 Peter Pan movie. A favor? He threw my hand to a crocodile. The beast liked it so much. It's followed me ever since licking its lips for the rest of me. They call that a favor! To Lex Luthor himself in the animated movie Justice League Gods and Monsters. We gave you fake copies. It was my idea. You were powerful enough without having that knowledge. Just recently, he even had one of his best turns yet in Gore Verbinski's A Cure for Wellness. 
In the film, the actor once again demonstrates his villainous chops as the head of a seemingly benevolent but very sinister medical center. If he was our doctor, we might just stick to bed rest and chicken soup. Think of it as a cleansing of the mind. It's not just the body. Number 5. Malcolm McDowell We fill it around for a while with other travelers of the night, playing hogs of the road. For many, this English actor's career playing villains began with his turn in Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of A Clockwork Orange, but it goes back a bit further. Before making cinema history, and forever ruining Singin' in the Rain for us, the actor appeared in a similarly sinister role in Lindsay Anderson's If, as a charismatic public school student who incites a full-on student uprising. And expect us to lick your frigid fingers for the rest of your frigid life. Since then, he's played villains in a number of movies, including Tank Girl and Star Trek Generations. If we had to pick a favorite of his recent work, we'd have to pick his turn as the head of the villainous Enclave in Fallout 3. How very open-minded of you. Kudos for embracing the reality of the situation. Number 4. Peter Stormera They're always... There aren't many actors who could appear as a human-looking and shoeless Satan and completely pull it off, but this Swedish-born actor is one of them. Oozing a threatening and slightly sleazy energy, the Fargo and 8mm star has made a living playing criminals and unsavory characters in TV and film. He's menaced the dude with a pair of scissors in The Big Lebowski. So we take some money, you have won, you uh, we call Shadifa. And more recently stared down a very unhappy John Wick in John Wick Chapter 2. I shall stay the pants here, Mr. Wick. But we can't help but keep coming back to his brief but memorable scene as Lucifer himself, also opposite Keanu Reeves in 2005's Constantine. The Prince of Darkness has never been this creepy. I know when you cut it deep, you cut the tendons. Finger movement goes out the window. Let me help you. Number three, Christoph Waltz. If you want to win the war tonight, we have to make a deal. Ever since exploding onto the scene as the monstrous Hans Landa in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, this actor has taken over the villain business. Since his breakout role, he's played baddies opposite screen icons like James Bond, played real-life monsters like Leon Rom in The Legend of Tarzan, and portrayed literary villains like Cardinal Richelieu in The Three Musketeers. The pride of victory without the risk of loss. I trust you didn't come here to impress me with your swordsmanship. If his role in Tarantino's bloodstained war movie proved anything, it's that the Austrian actor has the kind of sinister charm that makes for an amazing on-screen villain. And he's gone on to prove that time and time again in subsequent roles. Ooh, that's a bingo! <laughs> Number 2. Mads Mikkelsen Weeping blood comes merely from a derangement of the tear duct, my dear general. Nothing sinister. It takes a lot of qualities to play a good villain, and this star has all of them. Despite his first role as a somewhat hapless gangster, in Nicholas Winding Refn's Pusher, this Danish actor became a villainous force to be reckoned with in the wake of his appearance as Le Chiffre in Casino Royale. Thanks to his intense bearing, velvety smooth voice, and top-notch acting skills, he's landed villain roles like Caecilius in Doctor Strange. The many becoming the few. Coming the one. And did you know he even voiced the chameleonic Randall in the Danish dub of Monsters Inc? <laughs> and obviously, we can't overlook his performance as Hannibal Lecter on NBC's Hannibal. Who honestly could? Most psychology departments are filled with personality deficients. <laughs> Dr. Bloom would be the exception. Yes, she would. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number 1. Willem Dafoe Of course, this actor is great at playing antagonists. It's right there in his name. Dafoe? The Foe? He's worked with directors including Sam Raimi, Wes Anderson, and others, and they've all come to the same conclusion, that the Wisconsin native makes for a terrific villain. Performance enhancers. Bingo. Me. Your greatest creation. 
Another actor with a penchant for going all out, he's contorted his face into enough manic, sadistic grins that it's surprising he hasn't played the Joker by now. But while his villains may frequently be over the top, there's always just enough lurking below the surface to make them memorable and sometimes even sympathetic, in addition to flat out fun. I'm tired of your sophisms. Let's get on with it. It really makes you wonder if some of these guys are baddies in real life. Nah, Willem Dafoe saved Keanu Reeves and John Wick, so he's good in my books. So what'd you guys think of the list? Let us know in the comments below, and check out this video.